Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Well, this is my first budget drone review of the year 2023. Now, before I show you the video of this thing flying indoors and outdoors, let me tell you about it really quick. It has a 4K 30 frames per second camera up front. It also takes 4K photos. And what makes it different than most other models on the market that are also budget is that it has a built-in laser obstacle avoidance. Don't put your face in front. Also has optical flow on the bottom so you can fly it indoors, keeps it a little bit stable outdoors as well. It has landing lights so you can fly it in the evening if you want. I don't think the camera is good for the evening, but it does have landing lights and it looks pretty cool. You do get a remote that is a little bit upgraded. So it is a 3.5 kilometer range remote. I'll put what that is in miles someplace here. In my test, I did notice that the battery is pretty decent and you get 35 minutes flight time. That's what the specifications say. I don't think it's too far off because when I was flying this I was doing a long review and the battery just kept on lasting. Like all budget drones on the market, budget drones basically try to mimic the much more expensive drones at a lower price. So what they do is they throw in everything, the kitchen sink, the fridge, the stove, I don't know, everything you could possibly think of. They toss it into a drone and then they sell it for a very low price. It's never going to be the quality of like, oh, let's say a low price DJI drone, but you get an awful lot for what you pay for. So in this one, you do have things like tracking you have waypoints and you even have quick shots it does come with a really nice hard case to carry everything around the only thing i'll mention because a lot of people ask this even though you'll see it in the unboxing is that it does weigh more than 250 grams so in some countries that means you're going to have to register it to fly it now one thing to tell you before you watch this video is that whenever a manufacturer sends me a budget drone i usually always tell the manufacturers that in canada it gets very cold and if i'm going to review this in the winter it might not look that great in the review because the camera up front is going to bounce all over the place. And this one did exactly that. The only way I could fix it was to warm it up. I had to put this in my Jeep, let it sit there for about 20 minutes, warm up, and then I could bring it outdoors. And then it was no longer vibrating all over the place. So in this review, you're going to see this camera up front vibrating. That's going to make everything look a little bit jello-y in some images you're going to see. So please don't put a comment below and say, hey, there's jello in the image. I've already explained why there's jello. In the warmth, there's no jello. Anyways, here's my review. Check it out. Hey everyone, I'm out here with the F22S and it's pretty darn cold. It's like minus 12 degrees Celsius. That's what it is in Fahrenheit. The sun has gone out. It was out a while ago, which was keeping me warm. It's gone out, so it's not too warm right now. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. This is a little different. I think this F22S is more of a pro drone. I know it's a budget drone, but I think it's more pro. I don't think I have to do a compass calibration with it. I read the instructions and uh, it does does say you know do your normal compass calibration but this thing is supposed to be year 2022 or 2023 technology so i think i could just power it on and i'm just going to fly it without a compass or gps calibration coming to life okay so while this is going to get the gps signal and connect to my remote how about you watch me flying this indoors here i am indoors in a very small room and i'm going to fly this indoors it does have obstacle avoidance and the obstacle avoidance is going to go off to tell me hey there's a wall there another wall there's some chairs here so the first thing you're going to want to do is turn on your controller and your controller has a power button over here press it twice and it will power on so once and twice powered on there we are it says connecting because it's trying to connect to the drone but the drone is not even powered on yet so next take your drone make sure your gimbal guard is off and power it on the battery's right here so press and hold it down and all the lights go and we're all set to go plop it down flat lights will blink these two items will connect and when they're connected you'll see the power for the drone and this will say gps mode it should say gps mode or it's going to go into the last mode i used there we go, so it went into GPS mode. Now do not fly indoors if it says GPS mode on here. What you have to do is hold down the speed button for about five seconds. It should go to Addy mode. Come on, Addy mode, there we go. That's what you want, Addy mode to fly indoors. Now since you're indoors, you do not have to do a compass calibration, but you do have to do a gyro calibration. Let me show you that. So grab your controller and you take these two joysticks, you're gonna push them all the way up to the top and then out. So like this, up and out, and look at my drone down there. It flashed for a second, but uh, that's pretty much it. So how about I hold it this way so you can see it. Up and out, see the drone flash? 
That's a gyro calibration. It means it's all leveled and ready to take off indoors. You can also fly with no GPS outdoors, and I'm gonna show you that. I'll go fly to my backyard after I fly it here, and you'll see, even with no GPS on, it's very stable. Now to fly this, you really don't need your phone when you're flying in non-GPS mode and you're not using any of the features, but I'm gonna put my phone in here and we're gonna use the phone. This phone is an iPhone 11 Pro Max, so that means I have to use this here iPhone cable which goes in the bottom nicely, and uh, then you can run the app. The app you're gonna use is called SJF Pro. Start that up, and just make sure at the top right it says F22S, and you're all good to go, and then hit the controls button. And you'll be in the app, and you'll see what the camera on your drone sees. So you're all set to go. If you wanna go into video mode, hit this little three bar item up top, and select video and then hit the red button and you're recording video. You're pretty much all set to start flying. Now to get the drone to take off, take the joysticks, pull down and out or down and in. Here we go. Down and out and going up. The drone should hover in place as it's doing there. And uh, notice I don't hear any beeping. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna turn the up. There we go, obstacle avoidance now sees though. And now to keep this video short, I've moved outdoors to fly it outdoors, but I've left it in Addy mode. You can probably see it on there, or maybe you can't. And to launch it outside, same idea, joysticks down and in, or joysticks down and out. And you notice I have no footwear on, so I'm just going to stand back here. <laughs> All right, we'll go down and out, and we'll go straight up. There we go, we're in Addy mode, so it's using the underneath little uh, optical flow unit. There we go, I could fly it around the backyard. It it's bouncing around because it sees obstacles everywhere. So even in my backyard, with the 20 meter distance, look at as I spin it, obstacle, 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 obstacle. So, but you can get close to obstacles here. I'll see if I can bring it forward over here. As long as you don't go too fast. There we go. I'll see if I can go up. There we go. I don't think the optical flow is working too much anymore. There we go. It's going a little wonky now because the optical flow can't work, but at least now, uh, it should not see as many objects up front. Oh, there's a truck in front. I've been waiting for him to come get the garbage. There we go. There is a zoom control on here too. So if I go like this, I think it zooms a little bit. There we go. I can do a little bit of zooming. And uh, he's probably wondering why am I filming him? Okay, let's bring it down for a landing. I'm just gonna hold the left joystick down. It will go down. It has to know it's on the ground. Say, oh, I'm kind of close to that flower pot. It's on an angle too, so it doesn't really know it's level. It's probably thinking it's still flying. I'm just gonna keep holding it down. Yeah, it finally stopped. There we go. Okay, we're all good. All right, so I've done no compass calibration. I just powered it on and that's pretty much it. It says ready to fly on my display. So let's bring the joysticks down and out and take it up, see if it flops around. Well, I guess it is a pro type drone. Look at that. Check this out, I'm gonna come closer. My hat cam should pick this out. I have done zero compass calibration. Uh, the sun is out too, which is nice, but I've done zero compass calibration and uh, yeah, that's looking really mighty fine. Okay, this drone is really, really cold. I don't know if you can see it, my GoPro pick it up. Look at this camera, it's just vibrating. Look at that thing, it's just vibrating. So I don't know what the image looks like. It's just so cold, it's shaking. So I might look like jello in the image. All right, so let's try out the obstacle avoidance. Hopefully my screen record is working. As I move my hand, it came to life. So there it is. It says I'm two meters away. If I go back, I should be less. Oh, it's not changing. It should change. Hang on, I gotta get in front of it again. I'm pretty far. Yeah, there we go. See, it's a difference now. Hopefully the screen records working. I'll move my arms again. There, five meters, so it does work. And uh, I guess if I try to fly it into myself, let's bring it down to my leg or something. There we go, I've got the joystick, you can see it here, all the way forward. It won't run into me, so it's pretty decent that way. It sees me in front. All right, so the obstacle avoidance works, and I can fly it around out here. Oh, that's not good. Look at that, it's bouncing as if uh, it thinks it sees something. Oh, I see the problem, I see the problem. Okay, so this drone, with the obstacle avoidance up front. In order for this drone to move forward, it has to tilt forward. As it tilts forward, it sees the ground. So watch, if I go forward, see the tilt? It sees the ground, so it says it's an object. 
The only way it's going to work of not showing objects is if I put it away up in the air. So if you fly this low to the ground, you're going to get that jerky motion. Unless you go, maybe if you go really slow, let's try this. I'll turn it this way. Really slow movements if you want to fly it low to the ground. Yeah, it's perfect now. There's no jerkiness. As long as the nose doesn't tilt down towards the ground. All right, so that's pretty good. All right, since the sun's out, let's try a few of the features on here. There are landing lights on the bottom. They do go on. You have to hold down the return to home button all the way down and don't let go of the return to home button. Watch, they'll come on. They're on now and I'll turn it off. Go off, there we go. So let's go to GPS follow. So that should be the GPS on my phone. So as I hold this up and slide this, the drone should now follow uh, the GPS right here in my cell phone. So if I walk, I got my back to it, it should follow me. Hopefully it's working. I don't know, I seem to be getting farther away. Is it coming? Yeah, it's coming. All right, so this is a good thing. So the GPS follow seems to work. Next one to show you, I'll put it away up and I'll try this one, is image follow. Now image follow just follows whatever is in the center of the screen. So let me go over to the little item here and go to the next one, image follow. Tap on that, blah, 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 slide. I'm in the center of the screen. I don't, th yeah, I can draw a box around me. So it should follow me, I'm the box. So wherever I go, it follows me. It's sort of like active track. There we go. So it, it's coming, but uh, it's not doing very well. <laughs> I have to bring the camera up or else it's not gonna work. Let's see, is it gonna follow me? You know, everything's white around here. It has to follow. It is moving, it is following. Let's try to go back this way. The camera is moving, it's moving all over the place. Please reselect target. Okay, so the image follow is not the greatest on this thing. Interest point, that's point of interest. It's a little bit backwards. And here we go, the radius is set to five meters. That's good. Slide, and there she goes up. I'll have to adjust the camera, but I just want to see if it goes in an around orbit. Come on, you can do it, you can do it. There we go. And there's the orbit. I wonder if it's one of these ones where you can adjust manually as it's flying, let me try it. Oh, you can. Okay, I'm making the radius a little wider. It's working. I wonder if I can bring it down too. Yeah, it's coming down. Still orbiting. So that's a good thing. You can see me now as, it, as it's orbiting here. What else on here to show you? There are waypoints. I'll get to that later. Gesture I'm not doing. The zoom control. Oh, I, it's just like one of these slider zooms like this. There we go. You want to look at my feet? So if I put my feet over here. There we go. There's my feet right here. Zooming to my feet. At least it's a smooth zoom. Here, let's bring the camera up and look at something else. So we can zoom at it. The uh, gimbal on here moves very, very slow. So you can see it's not jerky or erratic. Okay, let's look over there. Zoom. There we go. So that's your zoomy zoomy. All right, hop out of the zoom. Oh, here's some cool things. Farfly, which is droney. Skyfly, spiral fly. Farfly, here we go. Farfly, go. It's just going to go out and back. There we are. So it gives you one of those type really cool views. There we go, our sun has gone out, so it's gonna turn around and come back. So this would be Skyfly. Looking up and Skyfly and slide. It'll go straight up. There we go. There we go, she's going up there. And it should go so high, then come straight down. Next one is Spiral Fly, so that's gonna do a circle. Uh, I think it goes up, I hope so, because there's trees over there. Let's just bring it up a bit, just in case it doesn't go up. Let's cross our fingers. This works out well. And slide to start. There we go. Spiral. Yeah, it is going up, so that's good. So I'll just follow it here as it's going up. Whoa, that sun is bright. And it does a huge spiral out there. You're going to manually have to keep the camera on yourself in this one, or else you're just going to become a dot on the ground as I am here. So far, everything works well. The only thing I didn't like so far was image follow, but I might get a chance to try that again. You do have vertical. I can change my screen, the vertical to film in vertical, uh, but I'm not going to do it here. What's the other one you have? Then you have filters, music, and VR. VR is when you buy those headsets off of Amazon for 20 or 30 bucks, put your phone in them and you can fly around as if it's FPV. It's a type of FPV. So let's go to uh, the root planner, which is waypoints. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in to me. There it is right there. So you can see the H is showing where home is. Hopefully my screen is recording and you can see the drone and you can see the dot being myself. These are the types of things you can usually put waypoints. I'll put them all around that. A big circle, there we go. I'm gonna hit go and I'm gonna take it up because it's gonna take my head off, but I'll try it anyways and see what it does. I don't think I'm high enough. 
Oh, maybe I am. <laughs> Whoa, get the hell out of the way. Here I thought I didn't have the drone high enough in the air to work, but no, it's doing it all by itself. It's doing all the waypoints. So I guess the height doesn't matter. And on my screen, if it's recording, you can see it going from waypoint to waypoint really fast. So that's pretty cool. All right. Uh, so let that be a lesson. If you don't think it's working, uh, just get out of the way. So that all works. The next one I want to try is the image follow again, the image track. Let's hop out of that and let's go to image follow because I don't know why it didn't work very well last time. Okay, slide. I'm in the picture, drawing a box around me. There we go. Do I have to tap on it or something? No, see, it's centered on me. It's perfect. It's working like it should. But when I walked, it just, oh, maybe because I turned my back to it. Ah, uh, that could be why. Let's, I'm going to keep my face at it this time because that's what I drew the box as. So, what's it doing? Does it got me? It's, it's kind of like confused as I move from side. It lost me again. All right. So, image follow is uh, pretty much next to useless on here. Sport mode. Here we go. This should be high speed. Oh yeah, she's moving, baby. I think it turns off the obstacle avoidance in sport mode. Yeah, I would have to. So here's normal mode. So that's normal. Let's back it up. I think camera mode is, uh, camera mode you would think would be slower. It didn't look like it was slower. Sport mode, camera mode, here we go. I guess that's slower, but it's not as slow as I would have expected for camera mode. See that school over there? All right, we're heading to the school. Going to the school, it's way over there. The school gives out a ton of Wi-Fi signals because it's a technical school. So I like to go around this school because it causes interference with the signal. Those uh, solar panels on the roof look pretty cool. Let me bring the camera down a bit. Oh, wrong way. Camera down a bit, this way. It's a very smooth camera for going up and down. There we are. I am seeing some jello in the image. I think the whole drone is just frozen. It's just shaking. But uh, there we are. No problem there. Yeah, everything is smooth on my, my display, so this is good. And my distance is almost uh, 250 meters. There we are. You see where I'm standing here looking straight ahead? There's a tree, there's a school, and the drone is away behind it. Like, there's a lot of obstacles between the drone and myself, so... And I'm still getting a clear signal, and I'm up to 300 meters. All right, let's go try the return to home really quick. Return to home is over here. Then I'm going to hit it. Going home. You know what's amazing? For the amount of time I've been flying, it says I have 66% battery left, if I'm reading that correctly. This thing flies for an awfully long time. And let's see what it's gonna land on. And it's probably gonna land on my bag and everything else. Man, that comes down fast, yep. Yeah. Oh, it's just gonna miss everything. It's not bad. Well, there was a takeoff point and uh, there's the landing point. That's pretty good. I'm just gonna let it fly for a bit and uh, shoot some video, see what it looks like. And there we are. All right, let's land this baby. All right, let's land it. And there we go. We're all done. All right, the next thing to show you would be what comes in the box if you buy this drone. So uh, check this out. This is the box your F-22S comes in. Inside the box, you'll find the carry case. Inside the carry case, you'll find your drone, your remote, and accessories. This is a foldable drone. However, the props are not foldable. To unfold the drone, remove the prop holder, then just pull each of the arms out. To power on the drone or check the battery level, just press this button. The battery is charged by USB-C connected here. The battery is a three cell, 3500 milliamp hour LiPo battery and it does give you 35 minutes of flight time. You can insert a micro SD card here so that you can record video and photos. The laser obstacle avoidance is right here. Don't stare at it. The 4K camera is on a two axis gimbal with electronic image stabilization. The forward arms can be extended for takeoff and landings. There's also the possibility that the antennas are in these forward arms. 
On the bottom you have landing lights and an optical flow sensor camera. Indicator lights can be found on the rear arms as well as the forward arms. Total takeoff weight of the drone is 594 grams. The included remote looks like a high quality piece of kit. Joysticks are stored in the forward section and can be easily screwed into place when needed for use. All buttons on the remote are self-explanatory. The screen on the remote is easy to see outdoors, but not really easy in direct sunlight. The upper portion pulls out so you can fit your phone in. This is the antenna. You must connect your phone to the remote via a cable and every type of cable for every type of phone is included. A full spare set of props is also included. These are quick release props, so no screws are required. USB cables are provided so you can charge up the battery and the remote. And finally, a fully detailed user manual is included. All right, so that's my review of the F22S. Now, a lot of you probably watched this review and said, this looks a lot like the old F11S, and you would be correct. It is an upgraded F11S, so they went with F22. So does that mean it's twice as good as the old one? I don't know. I will say it's a pretty decent drone for a budget drone. They really tossed a lot into this one. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you take this drone and look at the price of it and look at all the features in it with the remote and the case and the batteries and everything and the flight time and all the cool things it can do and you compare that for the same price against a DJI or Autel drone well you might be able to find a mini Autel or a mini DJI with very few features compared to this for the same price so that's why these exist on the planet and in some countries DJI and Autel drones are super expensive compared to a drone like this so this turns out to be a good deal depending on where you live in the world. So with all that said, depending on where you live in the world, you might find this at a very good price. I'm going to put links to it below. It is sold on the RC Going website and it's probably sold on other websites as well. So uh, I'll put the link to the RC Going. Go check it out and see if it is the budget drone for you. So thanks for watching this review. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you in future videos with many more cool products to review. Until then, I say bye.